Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning service. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 304. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Shepherd, show me how to go o'er the hillside steep, how to gather, how to sow, how to feed thy sheep. I will listen for thy voice, lest my footsteps stray. I will follow and rejoice all the rugged way. Hymn number 304. The scriptural will be given by Shahidat from Maryland. Good morning, I'll read from the book of Acts. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then will ye baptize? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should be believe on him, who should come after him that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, 
the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve, and he went to the syn- into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Let us have a moment of silent prayer and then repeat together the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science Textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 108. Here, O my Lord, I'd see thee face to face. Here would I touch and handle things unseen. Here, grasp with firmer hand the eternal grace, and all my weariness upon thee lean. Hymn number 108.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 o'clock with our roundtable discussion. And if you missed a roundtable discussion this morning, please be sure to catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We also have a Sunday school for children every Sunday that begins at 11 a.m., and is conducted via a teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world can attend. And we have a Wednesday evening testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery available for the infants and toddlers at all of our services. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube, and you can find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we are featuring an article that I recommend very highly to everyone. Uh, it's featured on the cover page of our website. It can be found on our website, entitled The Fruit of Right Thinking by Gilbert Carpenter. Excellent article. We will have another Bible study session next Saturday. So check the website for the Bible study questions, and please join us. That's next Saturday at 10 a.m. Also, I would like to announce that we will have an annual meeting of the membership a week from Thursday, January 24, at 8 p.m. So if you can't join us in person, uh, that meeting will be conducted over our regular teleconference number. And that's Thursday, January 24, 8 p.m. This being the Communion Sunday, I will read the tenets of Christian science from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. One, as adherents of truth... We take the inspired word of the Bible as our sufficient guide to eternal life. Two, we acknowledge and adore one supreme and infinite God. We acknowledge his Son, one Christ, the Holy Ghost or divine comforter, and man in God's image and likeness. Three, we acknowledge God's forgiveness of sin in the destruction of sin and the spiritual understanding that casts out evil as unreal. But the belief in sin is punished so long as the belief lasts. 4. We acknowledge Jesus' atonement as the evidence of divine efficacious love unfolding man's unity with God through Christ Jesus, the way-shower. And we acknowledge that man is saved through Christ, through truth, life, and love, as demonstrated by the Galilean prophet in healing the sick and overcoming sin and death. Five. We acknowledge that the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection served to uplift faith to understand eternal life, even the allness of soul, spirit, and the nothingness of matter. 6. And we solemnly promise to watch and pray for that mind to be in us which was also in Christ Jesus, to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, 
and to be merciful, just, and pure. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from miscellaneous writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Amanda from Missouri. Page 441. I have been thinking for a long time that I would give my experience in coming out of sickness into the knowledge of health by reading Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. I was 60 years old, as we mortals count time, before I ever read one word of Christian Science. On July 2nd, 1890, I met a scientist who gave me a pamphlet called Christian Healing by the Reverend Mary B. G. Eddy. At that time, I was almost helpless. This lady advised me to buy Science and Health. I did so and tried to read it, but my hands were so lame I could not hold it, and I let it fall to the floor so often that it became unbound, and I laid it away and resumed my medicine. The following May, the scientist visited in this city again, she advised me to burn all my medicines and to lean unreservedly on the promises of God. I took her advice, had my book rebound in three volumes so I could hold it more easily, and now read it constantly, reading nothing else. Sometimes I would suffer intensely. Then I would get a little better. Then more suffering and so on, until August, 1891, when all pain left me. I have had no return of it, and no disagreeable sensations of any kind, and am perfectly well in all respects. Surely, if we will but trust our Heavenly Father, He is sufficient for us. I hope someone of or near my age who is afflicted may read this and take courage. For I have demonstrated the fact that by reading science and health in connection with the Bible and trying to follow the teaching therein, one in the autumn of life may be made over new. I am so thankful to God for my great recovery. That remark of Sojourner Truth helps me to a better understanding of life in God. Quote, God is the great house that holds all his children. We dwell in him as the fishes dwell in the seas. End quote. PTP. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page four of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Sacrament. Golden Text, 1 Peter. Feed the flock of God which is among you, willingly, of a ready mind. The response of reading, Ezekiel. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As the shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people, 
and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. <coughs> and ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Fairly from Maryland will now read. The Holy Bible. Deuteronomy. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments. Always. Micah, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Matthew. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness 
shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. He shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. John, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Matthew. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung on him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. John. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. Matthew. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There ye shall see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Carol will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The substance of all devotion is the reflection and demonstration of divine love, healing sickness, and destroying sin. To keep the commandments of our Master and follow his example is our proper debt to him and the only worthy evidence of our gratitude for all that he has done. Outward worship is not of itself sufficient to express loyal and heartfelt gratitude, since he has said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. To the ritualistic priest and hypocritical Pharisee, Jesus said, The publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Jesus' history made a new calendar, which we call the Christian era. But he established no ritualistic worship. He knew that men can be baptized, partake of the Eucharist, support the clergy, observe the Sabbath, make long prayers, and yet be sensual and sinful. The spiritual essence of blood is sacrifice. The efficacy of Jesus' spiritual offering is infinitely greater than can be expressed by our sense of human blood. The material blood of Jesus was no more efficacious to cleanse from sin when it was shed upon the accursed tree than when it was flowing in his veins as he went daily about his father's business. His true flesh and blood were his life, and they truly eat his flesh and drink his blood who partake of that divine life. His consummate example was for the salvation of us all, but only through doing the works which he did and taught others to do. His purpose in healing was not alone to restore health, but to demonstrate his divine principle. He was inspired by God, by truth and love, in all that he said and did. Sheep, innocence, inoffensiveness, those who follow their leader. Our master cast out devils, evils, and healed the sick. It should be said of his followers also that they cast fear and all evil out of themselves and others and heal the sick. The Passover, which Jesus ate with his disciples in the month Nisan, on the night before his crucifixion, was a mournful occasion, a sad supper taken at the close of day, in the twilight of a glorious career, with shadows fast falling around. And this supper closed forever Jesus' ritualism or concessions to matter. His followers, sorrowful and silent, anticipating the hour of their master's betrayal, partook of the heavenly manna, which of old had fed in the wilderness the persecuted followers of truth. Their bread indeed came down from heaven. It was the great truth of spiritual being, healing the sick and casting out error. Their master had explained it all before, and now this bread 
was feeding and sustaining them. They had borne this bread from house to house, breaking, explaining it to others, and now it comforted themselves. For this truth of spiritual being, their master was about to suffer violence and drain to the dregs his cup of sorrow. He must leave them. With the great glory of an everlasting victory overshadowing him, he gave thanks and said, Drink ye all of it. When the human element in him struggled with the divine, our great teacher said, Not my will, but thine be done. That is, let not the flesh, but the spirit be represented in me. This is the new understanding of spiritual love. It gives all for Christ or truth. It blesses its enemies, heals the sick, casts out error, raises the dead from trespasses and sins, and preaches the gospel to the poor, the meek in heart. If all who ever partook of the sacrament had really commemorated the sufferings of Jesus and drunk of his cup, they would have revolutionized the world. If all who seek his commemoration through material symbols will take up the cross, heal the sick, cast out evils, and preach Christ or truth to the poor, the receptive thought, they will bring in the millennium. Through all the disciples experienced, they became more spiritual and understood better what the Master had taught. His resurrection was also their resurrection. It helped them to raise themselves and others from spiritual dullness and blind belief in God into the perception of infinite possibilities. What a contrast between our Lord's Last Supper and his last spiritual breakfast with his disciples in the bright morning hours at the joyful meeting on the shore of the Galilean Sea. His gloom had passed into glory and his disciples' grief into repentance, hearts chastened and pride rebuked. Convinced of the fruitlessness of their toil in the dark and wakened by their master's voice, they changed their methods, turned away from material things and cast their net on the right side. Discerning Christ, truth, anew on the shore of time, they were enabled to rise somewhat from mortal sensuousness or the burial of mind in matter, into newness of life as spirit. The spiritual meeting with our Lord in the dawn of a new light is the morning meal which Christian scientists commemorate. They bow before the Christ, truth, to receive more of his reappearing and silently to commune with the divine principle, love. Our baptism is a purification from all error. Our Eucharist is spiritual communion with the one God. Our bread, which cometh down from heaven, is truth. Our cup is the cross. Our wine is the inspiration of love, the draft our master drank and commended to his followers. It is the living Christ, the practical truth, which makes Jesus the resurrection and the life to all who follow him indeed. Obeying his precious precepts, 
following his demonstration so far as we apprehend it, we drink of his cup, partake of his bread, are baptized with his purity, and at last we shall rest, sit down with him in a full understanding of the divine principle which triumphs over death. This being the Communion Sunday, I would like to invite the congregation to kneel in silent prayer and then join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Let's now sing hymn number 300. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Saw ye my Savior, heard ye the glad sound, felt ye the power of the word. T'was the truth that made us free and was found by you and me in the life and the love of our Lord. Hymn number 300.
Let's now sing hymn number one. Be thou, O God, exalted high, and as thy glory fills the sky, so let it be on earth displayed, till thou art here and now obeyed. Hymn number one.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen.